1.The F-35 has a long way to go. That's the farewell message from Dr. Michael Gilmore, now retired Director of Operations Testing and Evaluation, in his latest annual report. The Joint Strike Fighter program has cost over $100 billion in nearly 25 years. Just to complete the basic development phase would require at least an additional $1 billion in another two years. Even with this huge investment of time and money, Dr. Gilmore told Congress, the Pentagon, and the public, the operational suitability of all variants continues to be less than the service would like. Dr. Gilmore details a series of remaining and sometimes worsening issues with the program, including hundreds of critical performance flaws and maintenance issues. He also raised serious questions about whether the Air Force's F-35A can succeed in either air-to-air -air or air-to-ground missions, whether the Marine Corps F-35B can perform rudimentary close air support, and whether the Navy's F-35B the 35C is suitable for operation from aircraft carriers. He found, in fact, that if deployed in combat, the F-35 aircraft would require support for finding and evading modern threat ground radars, acquiring targets, and engaging enemy fighter formations due to unresolved performance deficiencies and limited availability of weapons carriages. In a public statement, the F-35 Joint Program Office sought to dismiss Gilmore's report by asserting, all issues are known to the JPO, U.S. services, our international partners, and our industry. The JPO's acknowledgement of many issues is fine so far, but there is no indication that the office has a plan, including cost and schedule re-estimates, to fix currently known issues without taking shortcuts. Nor do they appear to have any plans to address and fund fixes for the myriad of unknown issues that will be revealed during the next four years of much more stringent development and operational tests. Such a plan is essential, and should be driven by the speed at which problems are actually resolved rather than by an unrealistic pre-existing schedule. What is needed to fix many of the problems identified by Dr. Gilmore, and how can we best move forward with the most expensive weapons program in history, a program that cannot deliver on its own very simple promise? The F-35 is being sold to the Americans based on most of its mission systems, the various advanced electronics in the jet. A quick read of any of the hagiographic articles about the F-35 will find that they almost always demonstrate their ability to gather large amounts of information. This information is supposed to come via onboard sensors and data links to outside network sources, and then combined by the F-35's computer systems to identify and display the pilot's specific threats, targets, and accompanying force images, i.e. situational awareness. This process is designed to allow pilots to dominate the battle space. Based on the actual test performance of this system during development testing, it appears that the electronics are seriously interfering with the pilot's ability to defend and win. Overall, the problems with the F-35 sensors, computers, and software, including creating fake targets and reporting inaccurate locations, were severe enough that the test team at Edwards Air Force Base rated them red, meaning they couldn't do anything about it. Combat duties expected of them. One system, the Electro-Optical Targeting System EOTS, was chosen by pilots as being lower in resolution and range than the system currently used on older aircraft. EOTS is one of the systems designed to help the F-35 detect and destroy enemy warplanes from far enough away to make dogfighting a thing of the past. Mounted near the nose of the aircraft, it is equipped with television cameras, infrared search and tracking systems, as well as rangefinders and laser pointers. These sensors rotate under computer control to track targets through a wide field of view and display an image on the pilot's helmet shield screen. The limitations of EOTS, including image degradation with humidity, force pilots to fly in closer to a target than they had to when using earlier systems just to get a clear enough picture to launch a missile or take a shot. 
The report says the problem is bad enough that F-35 pilots may need to fly in so close to acquire the target that they would have to maneuver away to gain the distance needed for a guided weapon shot. Thus, the system's limitations can force an attacking F-35 to compromise surprise, allowing the enemy to maneuver to a first shot opportunity. Surrendering the element of surprise and enabling an opponent to shoot first is what we want to force the enemy to do, not ourselves. Another often touted feature that is supposed to give the F-35 superior situational awareness is the Distributed Aperture System, DAS. The DAS is one of the primary sensors feeding the displays to the infamous $600,000 helmet system, and it is also failing to live up to the hype. The DAS sensors are six video cameras or eyes distributed around the fuselage of the F-35 that project onto the helmet visor the outside view in any direction the pilot wants to look, including downwards or to the rear. At the same time, the helmet visor displays the flight instruments and the target and threat symbols derived from the sensors and mission system. But because of problems with excessive false targets, unstable jittered images, and information overload, Pilots are turning off some of the sensor and computer inputs and relying instead on simplified displays or the more traditional instrument panel. Here again, the system is little better than those it's supposed to replace. Test pilots also had difficulty with the helmet during some of the important weapon delivery accuracy tests. Several of the pilots described the displays in the helmet as operationally unusable and potentially unsafe because of symbol clutter obscuring ground targets. While attempting to test fire short-range AIM-9X air-to-air missiles against targets, pilots reported that their view of the target was blocked by the symbols displayed on their helmet visors. Pilots also reported that the symbols were unstable while they were attempting to track targets. Then there is the matter of pilots actually seeing double due to false tracks. There is a problem with taking all the information generated by the various onboard instruments and merging it into a coherent picture for the pilot, a process called sensor fusion. Pilots are reporting that the different instruments, like the plane's radar and the EOTS, are detecting the same target but the computer compiling the information is displaying the single target as two. Pilots have tried to work around this problem by shutting off some of the sensors to make the superfluous targets disappear. This, DOTNE says, is unacceptable for combat and violates the basic principle of fusing contributions from multiple sensors into an accurate track and clear display to gain situational awareness and to identify and engage enemy targets. And as bad as the problem is in a single plane, it's much worse when several planes are attempting to share data across the network. The F-35 has a multifunction advanced data link, MADL, that is designed to enable the plane to share information with other F-35s in order to give all the pilots a common picture of the battle space. It does this by taking all the data generated by each plane and combining it into a single, shared view of the world. But this system, too, is creating erroneous or split images of targets. Compounding the problem, the system is also sometimes dropping images of targets altogether, causing confusion inside the cockpits about what's there or not there. All of this means that the systems meant to give the pilots a better understanding of the world around them can do exactly the opposite. According to the report, these systems continue to degrade battle space awareness and increase pilot workload. Workarounds to these deficiencies are time-consuming for the pilot and detract from efficient and effective mission execution. F-35 boosters say it's the network that matters. What actually matters is that the network isn't working. Ineffective as a fighter, the F-35 was intended to be a multi-role aircraft from its inception. This latest report provides a clear picture of how it stacks up so far in its various roles, including in comparison to each aircraft it's supposed to replace. The news is not encouraging. The F-35's shortcomings as an air-to-air -air fighter have already been well documented. It famously lost in mock aerial combat within visual range, WVR, 
where its radar stealth is of no advantage. To an F-16 in early 2015, one of the planes the F-35 is supposed to replace as an aerial fighter. The F-35 lost repeatedly in air-to-air -air maneuvering despite the fact that the test was rigged in its favor because the F-16 employed was the heavier two-seat. 